still not live? We're still not live. Okay, here we go. And we are back for the start of the second half of the doubleheader. We are one and two strikes on Ashley, and she swings and strikes out. That was Botnik. And now coming to the plate will be number 24, Tali Schimmel. Bulldogs have made a little change to their starting lineup here for game number two as Coach uh, Marinello wants to bring in some of the reserves on his bench. And she flies in out of play down the first baseline. It is one strike. So the Bulldogs will do some changes. First, Paige Palacios will lead off as she did in game one. Palenque will go number two, then Van Vliet, then Frank, then Vita Rodriguez. Now new to the lineup. Foul away. So new to the lineup for Brooklyn will be Gendry Maria, the 5'5 sophomore out of Orchard Collegiate Academy. She'll bat fifth. She'll bat si uh, six, excuse me. Gazzardi will move up to seventh in the lineup. And then we'll have Amelia Jefferson batting eighth, left fielder out of Harlem, New York. Swing and a miss. And that's two strikeouts in a row for Gazzardi picking up right where she left off. And then Brismali. And then Grismarly Brito Mejia will bat ninth out of Uncommon Charter High School. So it's Appel at the plate. One ball, no strikes, two outs. We're in the top of the first and the second game of the doubleheader between your Bulldogs and the Yeshiva University Maccabees. Swing and a miss, strike one. One ball, one strike, two outs. The wind has definitely picked up here, Jonathan. Yep, you can feel the temperature drop a little bit too. Yep. As it's starting but to not get a little bit. Not that bad. Well, not yet, yeah. Balls Ball inside. inside. It's two balls and one strike. Two miss appell. On deck is number six. That is miss. Oh, hold on. We got a foul ball as it ricocheted off of the catcher. And it's Linda Dayen on deck. Umpires have now changed, so now Larry Steamer will be behind the plate, and Jerry Anglera will be the outfield ump. Outside, ball three, it's a full count. And she walks her, so the perfect game is gone. As well, he walks the batter. No hitters still in play. So it's Diane at the plate with a runner on first. The first base runner of the evening for the Maccabees. Swing and a miss. Strike one. On deck, strike two with a swing. It's Yao Gnauer on deck. And the dirt, and the runner goes to second, and she's going to be in for yep. a stolen base. First time we've seen a stolen base so far in the two in the doubleheader here today, Pat. Well, yep. more of it was on a wild pitch, but. Gazzardi ready. Ground ball, right, right, right to the pitcher. To she turns around, throws it to first, and that's the end of the inning. No hits, one walk, one left at the middle of the first, where 0 0 with the Brooklyn College Bulldogs coming to bat. Good start for Brooklyn. Good job to get your know, first base runner they've faced this whole game so far. Right now the Bulldogs looking to get on the board early in the second game of this doubleheader, trying to sweep this doubleheader. They're four and nine on the year, looking to go to five and nine. It'd be important if the Bulldogs could pick up a win here today to, to really go up, to really finish strong. Yep. Just making a defensive change. Uh, Vita, the catcher, is going to play first base. Zoe's going to, they're just going to switch positions. Catcher okay. 
So Zoe Van Vliet will be catching, and Vita Rodriguez will be at first base. Okay. Right. So Van Vliet now will take over at catcher, and Vita Rodriguez will go from catcher to first base. So there'll be a little change for Brooklyn. But they stay in the same position in the lineup. Yeah, they're they not going to yeah, change right. positions on the field, which will be fine. All right. So I thank the coach for getting us that information. So, in same pitcher, it'll be number eight, Alexis Leibowitz, on the mound for the Maccabees to start the second game. As we're getting set now to start the bottom of the first inning, the Bulldogs with a strong inning for Gazzardi. And now, Bulldogs are looking to keep that going here. And it's going to be uh, Paige Palacios to lay it off. So it's Palacios, Palenque, and Van Vliet. One, two, and three. There's a ground and ball. grounded to the shortstop, picked it up, throws across, and in time. So it goes 5-3, sorry, 6-3 on the put out. So it's now Jalissa Palenque at bat. Palenque had a very strong first game of the doubleheader. We'll see if she can, we'll see if she can bounce back even more. She went one for three in that game. The Jalissa, well, one. Well, one. Outside. So Brooklyn has a brand new outfield for the second game as Lee Britz warms up and she's ready to go. And here's the pitch. Popped up to right field and it drops in for a base hit. She rounds first, she's going to second, and she's going to be in with a double. Great piece of hitting there for Palenk. So now it's going to be Zoe Van Vliet to come to the plate. So the Bulldogs have their first runner in scoring position here to start this. And we got high ball one. No balls. One, no strike, so one ball, no strike, one out. Bottom of the first. Ball is high, it's ball two. Van Vliet having a good eye. Takes some practice swings out of the batter's box and steps back in. And line into center field for a base hit. Drops in and rounding third is Palenque. She's coming home and she's going to score on an RBI single by Van Vliet. What aggressive base running. Love the aggressive base running there by Palenque. It's now Isabel Frank playing second base in the second game. And she's at the plate. Leave it with steals. High ball one. Brooklyn College won the first game 12 to nothing on a perfect game by Gazzardi. Outside, ball two. Isabel Frank went one for three in that first game with two RBIs. And over the shortstop's head into center field, and it's going to be a single for Frank. And now it's the first baseman, Vida Rodriguez. Bulldogs are picking up right from where they left off from game one. And already the Bulldogs have a threat, already have a run in, and are threatening for more here in the bottom of the first. So Rodriguez steps into the plate. And we got strike one. 
on the off speed pitch. In the dirt, blocked by Botnick. And it's going to be one ball and one strike. On deck is number 16. That is Gentry Maria. And bounce to shortstop. Picks it up. Throws the third. Gets the force. And it's two outs on the fielder's choice by Rodriguez. All right. So fielder's choice. And that play goes four, five. No, 5-6. Five, 5-6. Six. Five, six. I'm 6-5. I'm sorry. 6-5. Yes, 6-5. And now it's Gendry Maria with two outs and runners on first and second. Pitches in there for strike a strike. Strike one. So Frank's on second. Rodriguez on first. Two outs in the bottom of the first. one nothing. Bulldogs up. On the outside corner is called. It's two strikes. Gazzardi on deck. Foul the way, it's going to stay 0-2. High. One ball, two strikes. Leibowitz trying to move her off the plate a little bit, trying to move... Gendry Maria a little out of the batter's box. And here comes the pitch. Popped up and out of play behind us. So still one ball, two strikes. So three and two runners will be on the move with two outs. Here's the payoff. High ball four, and the bases are loaded for the pitcher, Danielle Guzardi. That was a close, close pitch. I thought that was going to maybe ring up. I thought that was maybe going to ring up the uh, Bulldogs there, but the inning keeps going, and they have base Guzardi loaded. Pops it up, and it's going to be fouled and not caught. Good chase there by the third baseman, but not in time. And it's going to be a long strike to Gazzardi with the bases full of dogs trying to bring them home to get a bone. Love that reference, Pat. On deck, Amelia Jefferson takes a pitch, swing, and a miss. Strike two to Gazzardi. Well, so, a uh, dropping action to it. Yeah, Leibowitz trying to get out of the inning and pitching in and out of trouble. Only giving up one run. Here's the pitch. Popped up and going to stay. Strike two. Gazzardi happy with her perfect game in that first game. With 10 strikeouts. Impressive outing she had in game one. Outside, ball one. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Frank on third. Rodriguez on second. And Maria on first. Zardi gets the pitch. Popped up out of play, and it's going to be still one ball and two strikes. Gazzardi staying alive. Got the Bee Gees playing from Saturday Night Fever. We're just missing John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Gazzardi trying to work the count back in her favor. Leibowitz on the rubber. Here comes the delivery. Foul the way Gazzardi stays alive. And that ball hit just under the GoPro camera. Yikes. Well, good thing we keep those cameras in good, good shape, and it's on the back side of the fence and not on the front. Amen to that. <laughs> hey, you got to be happy for that, man. Here comes the pitch, and it's going to be hit up into left field. Coming on, it's going to drop for a base hit, and it's going to be two runs scored. It's going to be a RBI single, and she advances a second on the throw. Two RBIs single for Gazzardi. And it's 3 nothing, Brooklyn. 
And those are the big hits you need to have with two outs. You take advantage of those opportunities. And those right there make a big difference in games. The oh, two, yes. The two-out hits, two-out hitting, situational hitting. Left fielder Dan was playing way back in a lot of room in front. That's why the ball dropped in. And hold on. We have uh, do a pinch, run is he pinch, do a runner pinch runner. He is, is going to be 14, Trousdale, coming in for Gazzardi. He does not want his pitcher running the bases. I understand that. That's a Makes fair point. sense. So Trousdale is going to pitch. I mean, not pitch. Is going to pinch right. run for yeah. Gazzardi. Gazzardi will come Jefferson. back in this game. Don't you guys worry. She'll yes. be back. Jefferson at the plate. Ball strike, strike one strike. on ball. the outside wow. corner. That so was a pitch on, all the way in the dirt. On second is Trousdale. On third is Maria. Ball goes behind, and nobody's no, going to advance. As it's going to be one ball. And one strike. And Coach Marinella's like, you should have went. You could have scored. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Dropped and through the hole for a base hit. One run's going to score. Trials A's coming home. No throw. It's going to be a two RBI single for Jefferson. Good piece of hitting. The Bulldog bench even pitching in here for today. And just like the first game, five Brooklyn nothing, jumps Brooklyn. up 5 nothing. But here's the big difference. These four runs have all come with two outs. And it's Grismali Brajito Mejia at the plate. Strike one on the outside corner. Here's the pitch. And Foul. fouled off. Nice hack there by Mejia. But it's going to be no balls, two strikes. Two outs, one runner on first, it's Jefferson. Five nothing, Brooklyn up. And Line caught. caught, lined and caught by the shortstop, but it's five runs on four hits, no errors, one run left, I'm sorry, one runner left. It's five nothing going to the top of the second. Still gotta like the way the Bulldogs came out, had good at bats and quickly put the pressure early. And now Gazzardi's going to come back into the game after she was pinch run. So Gazzardi will reclaim her spot on the mound. And it's going to be... Hold on a second. It's going to be 5, 6, and 7 for Yoshila. So Marinello's going to stick with the... He's going to stick with the change that he made last inning. So... So Van Vliet will go behind the plate and catch, and now Rodriguez will go to first base. And Gazzardi will come back on the mound. Now Gazzardi's perfect game in this game has already been broken through a, through a walk early. Yep. But first no hitters walk. still in play. Yeah, perfect. I'm not perfect. No uh, hitters still, no hitter still in no play. No hitter, yep. So Brooklyn almost batted around. In that first inning, they went one to nine. They basically did bat around just well, about. Just, just about. about. They sent all nine hitters to the plate yep. in that first inning. But yes. Now we go to the bottom of the now we go to the top of the second, and we'll see if the Bulldogs can continue to build on this five nothing lead. So it's going to be number one leading off. That's going to be one, Yael Gnauer. Gnauer. So Yael Ganauer leads off for Yeshiva. And Gazzardi. Five, six, seven with Leibowitz on deck. The sign. Pitch. And foul the way down third base. It's going to be strike one. And Gazzardi gets the call and she's ready to deliver. Swing and a miss. It's a strike. Well, Gazzardi doesn't look like she's lost any of that zip on the fastball from game one. It's still got that same up, that same high life to it. Foul, Foul back and out of play. Woo, goodness. Yeah, the ball almost hit. the back of the screen. <laughs> Leibowitz on deck. She ducked, got out of the way. Good reaction time. It's one ball, two strikes. Definitely feel a little chill in the air now. Foul that away one goes again. back to the behind the backstop. Gnarl staying alive. 
Yeah, it has dip. You feel the dip, but it's not unbearable. No. Nowhere near it. We're still good. We're still, still good a nice here. spring day. <laughs> yep. Still one and two the count on Ganauer. In the dirt. Low. It's two and two. Two, two. Two balls, two strikes. One and two. One and two. Okay. And Wait, on Missy it, and. strikes it out, so that is it. The first, the second, oh, sorry, the third strikeout for Gazzardi in this second game. So she's has 13 mm -hmm. on the evening. Eight, and it's eight. now Alexis Leibowitz, the pitcher at the plate with one away. Fouled off of first base, strike one. One out. One out here in the top of the second. As Gazzardi's ready. And popped Pop up, up to first baseman Two Rodriguez, away. and she makes the catch for the second out. So now it is Kahani, Kahane, sorry. Kahani, Kahane, yep. Kahane coming to the plate. Dana Kahane, the lefty Gazzardi. at the plate. Zardi. Yes. And strike one on the outside corner. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Gazzardi looking to ring up her fourth strikeout of the second game. She has that fastball working pad. That, that it's impossible to pick it up. That fastball just and she went. She went all speed went and drop good job there. by yep. uh, Kahane to foul it off. I like the way she's just trying to mix it up. Fastball, fastball. Ooh, a little slow and fast. Yeah, that's always the trick. You have to throw off the hitter's timing. And popped up to the shortstop. Picks it up. Throws cross. Got her in time. Great play. And oh. Hope, oh, she tried to dive trying in to slide into and, first she and she tripped went on down. her foot. Players are going to come off. And she is down. That was Kahani who tried to beat out a tough throw. She yeah. tried to slide into first and she may have tweaked her leg sliding. It was uh, an unorthodox. Yeah, there's, unorthodox uh, there's, there's always a danger run. when you slide into first. You know, so, honestly. It's very tough because if you slide into the bag, you're slowing down your own momentum as you're trying to get in. Yeah, she's in, she's in, she's in a, a lot considerable of pain. amount of pain right now. And we don't want to speculate, but she did go into the base a little unawkward, unorthodox. Yeah. And uh, hopefully she's off. She's up. That's good. Yeah. And she has to get helped off, though. She, she cannot put any weight on though. that leg. Coach Marinello is even giving her a hand uh, yes, as well. So it looks like... Uh, She's, she is walking on the home power. I don't yeah. know if she'll be staying in the game or not, but uh, it's good to see her up yes. and walking on her own strength. We'll have to see if she even might make a change. We'll yeah. have to see. We'll follow that as we go. So that was the end of the inning. So it was three up, three down. For and Yoshida. now coming to the plate for Brooklyn. It's the top of the order. It'll be Palacios, Palenque, and Van Vliet. Palacios grounded out. Palenque hit a double, and then Van Vliet drove her in with the single. Closing in in a matter of minutes on men's volleyball. The first, the quarterfinals are coming up. We'll find out. We will give you updates throughout. Yes. Bulldogs and the Lightning. Cuniac quarterfinals in volleyball. Jonathan, it was great having you as a partner for basketball and men's volleyball. Always, man. It's always a pleasure to be here and, you know, getting to do this every time we get a chance. It's it's an honor. Looking for bigger and better things in the fall of 24. Absolutely. want to thank uh, the athletic director, Mr. Eric Smiles, for always supporting us and getting us the tools that we need and well, Coach always Alex very Lang. enthusiastic, of course, with the assistant athletic director, former head coach, Alex uh, Lang. Alex Lang. Also want to thank uh, Tim Slakas, who's oh, yes. 
our sports information director does a very good job in Guess all, all this every, equipment and the equipment that we have and just everybody on the Brooklyn College Athletics they they've all done such a tremendous job and you know we wouldn't be where we are without the help that they bring to these broadcasts and the support we get from them it, true 100 percent jonathan 100 percent as we are now getting set for the bottom of the second and Leibowitz is still so i'm waiting to get the the uh who's going to replace uh kahane. kahane in the field kahane kahane sorry thank yep. you well kahane wore number 30 so we're gonna yeah, have to find so. out kahane is still in the dugout yes yeah, she's still in the dugout getting looked at and Kahane was playing center field, I Center believe. field. Yes. So we're going to wait right now to see who's going to replace her. Still trying to see what Yeshiva is going to do. They're going to be, we're still waiting on Kahane. Is she going to come back into this game or are they going to? We're waiting. Still warming up. Looks like our athletic trainer is taping up the leg of Kahane. So maybe what they're going to tape her up and then see if she's game. going to be able to come back in the game? Is that what it is? Well, she was starting to walk off a little bit better after, you know, after she originally was having trouble putting weight on her foot. But it's still hard to say. The still being looked at by the trainer. So in the meantime, it's five nothing Brooklyn as we go into the bottom of the second. Coach Marinello definitely uh, utilizing his whole cr uh, crew today, going with the bench, playing some of his players off the bench here to start things off in game number two. Bulldogs, if you hadn't joined us in the earlier, Bulldogs put up a 12-0 shutout in game one of this doubleheader, a perfect game, 10K performance for Danielle Guzardi. Guzardi's right back in here again to pitch the second game of the doubleheader, so very strong outing for her. So we are in a entry delay right here for the start of the bottom of the second. Yeshiva is still taking warm-ups. Bulldogs are still waiting to see what we're going to happen. Now, I can only wonder if, if – I don't think we've seen a team play with just eight players out of nine. I don't think you can do that no, here. No, I don't think so. Not, not like in basketball where you can wind up being five on four. Or like in Field of Dreams where it was uh, eight players and they needed right. nine to play a full game. Yep. But the point of the matter is, uh, right now, is Kahane going to be okay to return to the game? We still don't know. She's being looked at in the dugout. Yep. Well, the, the, the whole thing is the officials, the umpires aren't really pushing the issue. So I guess they're giving her time. It looked like she might be able to play again. So uh, they're giving the trainer time to taper up and uh, see if she can get on the field. So in the meantime, you're watching Brooklyn College Bulldogs softball on YouTube.com, your home for everything Brooklyn. I'm Jonathan Perriente, along with my broadcast partner, Pat Brown. We thank you so much for spending your Monday and your Tuesday here with us. You know, Jonathan, let's recap the sports for 2023 into 2024. The women's volleyball team, they made it to the semifinal, uh, sorry, the quarterfinals yep. in volleyball. The soccer team made it to the finals and lost, unfortunately. The men's basketball team made it to the CUNY. Oh, oh right. And it looks she's like back. Is okay. Yes, she's back in there. She is back. No Kane's limp, and she's good. going Getting into great applause center from the field. Bulldogs and umps. I mean, that's the great sportsmanship you want to see in this game. You know, exactly. You, don't, you never want to see anybody get hurt no, at not all. Not at all. So Kahane will come back into the outfield, and we're ready to proceed with the bottom of the second. It's like I was saying, the men's Bulldogs, they made it to the quarterfinals, lost by three points to Hunter College. The women won their fourth straight championship. Yep. 
going to the NCAA tournament for the fourth year in a row. Hold on. And we're back for the bottom of the second. It is Palacios. Paige Palacios. She bounced out to the shortstop in the first inning. And the pitch by Leibowitz is and low. And it's strike, strike one. Palacios <laughs> back in the batter's box. Leibowitz is ready, and she delivers. And popped up and over the shortstop head for a single. Palacios with her first hit of the second game. And now Palenque comes to bat. Good start of the inning for Palacios. And Paige Palacios is going to switch it and bat lefty. That's Palenque up. That's Palenque. I think it's Palacios. Palacios. Oh, I heard you I'm say Palacios. Sorry. Palenque. Up and something time. got in Leibowitz's eye. Oh, okay, they're going to. You know, interestingly enough, she's not wearing that face guard that she yeah, wore she in had game the first one. Game? This time she's not wearing. Oh, no, she's playing it back oh, on. Okay. okay. My apologies. She had it off for a sec. I thought she was not wearing it. Okay. It, it didn't look like she had it on. Yeah. So it is Palenque batting lefty for the first time. Didn't know she was a switch hitter. No. And she's and got a she bunt. Good right piece of hitting. The sacrifice is good. Runner to second base. Good. Good solid bunt from Palenque. Yep, she gets Palacios over into scoring position. Nice bunt lefty. All right, so that play will go 2-3 on the sacrifice. Yep. And it brings up Van Vliet. Zoe Van Vliet with an RBI single in the first. Another RBI waiting. Popped up. up in the air. It's going to be fair because you know Botnick could not get to it. Neither the first baseman. It dropped in between right at the on-deck circle. So it's a long, high strike. Strike one. one. Oh, and one the count on Van Vliet. That's, that's a baseball name, Van Vliet. <laughs> well, well, there was a basketball player named Freddie Van Vliet. Yep. I wonder if there's a relation. Pitches Pitch. outside. One count ball. One one. One strike, one out. Palacios on second. Brooklyn up 5 nothing in the bottom of the second inning. Second game of the doubleheader, winning the first one, 12 nothing in a perfect game. In the dirt, and the runner will not advance. The count is 2 and 1. On deck, the second baseman, Isabel Frank. Pitch lined and over the head of the left fielder. And it's going to be Palenque, I'm sorry, Palacios rounding and coming home and going to third base. It's going to be Palenque and she's in. I'm sorry, Van Vliet with a triple. Good piece Van of hitting. Van Vliet, the Fleet feet, goes to third base, drives in the RBI, and it's now 6 nothing. Brooklyn with Frank. Mm -hmm. Up to bat. At the plate. Good piece of hitting. I just love the approach that Van Vliet took and just scorched that last fastball into left field to the wall. And the Bulldogs have the 6 nothing lead and looking to build on it even more. First pitch outside for ball one. Van Vliet on third. Frank is ready. So is Lebo. She delivers. And foul down the third base line. It's going to be one ball and one strike. So Frank steps back into the batter's box. Liebitz delivers. And foul away. It's going to be one ball and two strikes. On deck, Vida Rodriguez. Jonathan, did you play any uh, any street ball back in your day when you were young? I played a little basketball when I was, uh, what, like maybe 13. Oh, it's a line drive, but that's going to be foul. I played a little basketball when I was like 13. I, I was more of like a bench guy. I played a little defense here and there. Wasn't really much of a score, but you know, listen, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. And I did a little bowling back when I was in high school. Oh, bowling. Yeah. Love bowling. Uh, I'll give you a little history. My wife was actually on the tour. She was in the PBA. Oh, wow. Yep. How'd she do? High ball, too. Uh, she was a one, what was the average? One. Oh man, it's been so long ago. I, I bowled, uh, I think once, like a one thirty-one. I, I don't want to. I don't want to misquote her since she'll beat me up. So <laughs> I bowled at least a one thirty-one once. All right, here's the pitch, two and two, and, and it hits. Hit her. Yeah. 
on the calf, so she's going to take her base. Hit by pitch, Miss Frank, and now Rodriguez comes to the plate. Bulldogs have two on here with one out. On the corners. So she um, she actually uh, bowled in leagues, and she was on, you know, the four-woman team and the mixed team. Oh, wow. So uh, she, she, she was really good. That's how I met her. I Pretty met her impressive. in a bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's nothing. No, sh no shame in that. No. no. You ever face her in I, a? I got, I got involved in bowling. I'm, I'm not that good, but I have fun. She still bowls pretty good. Yes. Ooh, that pretty good. Yeah, she, she has a wicked hook. Oh my goodness. Ball Man, two. I had a. I tried to experiment with a hook of my own when I was uh, facing Sheeps at Bay High School. It, it was. I don't know. I like. I literally would like cradle the ball in my. <laughs> The pitch is low. I literally would cradle. And going to second base is Frank on the pass ball. I would literally like cradle the ball in my hand and just fling it like like just kind of like. Okay. It was a style I picked up from one of the players on the Chiefs at Bay. It, 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 hey, Ken, your flashlight is on. Pitch is fouled back. Bulldogs have runners at second and third with one out here in yeah, the bottom of my the wife, second. My wife would call you a cranker. A cranker? Yes. Oh, no. That's the put the ball in the cup and then come back. <laughs> Well, that was about as best as I knew how to hook. That was the best. That was my only attempt at hooking a ball. She actually taught me how to hook because I was ready a straight ball. Here's the pitch and high. Maybe one day I'll pick some. Yeah, maybe one day she can show me how yeah, to maybe, hook. Maybe one day we get together and go bowling. Yeah, that's not a bad Down idea, the line. actually. That's actually not maybe a bad idea. Maybe sometime in the summer. Who knows, right? All right. So, Leibowitz is ready to deliver the pitch to Rodriguez. And line to center. And on the run, and oh, she dropped the oh, ball. Oh, they're not going to call that a catch on the transfer? No. no? Mm -mm. Nope. That ball drops. It's 7 nothing. Yep. That's an error. And that is safe. And it's going to be Rodriguez reaching on the error. That's a RBI. And it's 7 nothing. Runners on first and second with one out. At the plate, Jefferson. Strike call. Strike one on the outside corner. Here's the second pitch. In the dirt. One ball, one strike. And Jonathan, in between the innings, I want you to tell me how you got involved in broadcasting. Ah, well. All right. All right, between the innings, sure. Yeah. And fouled away. It's going to be one ball and two strikes. Leibowitz, foot on the rubber. Jefferson at the plate and ready. Here's the pitch. And bounced up the middle, off the glove of the pitcher. Scooped up and tried to get the force at second. Was the shortstop. Not in time. The bases are loaded on the infield single by Gendry Maria. Gazzardi now at the plate. Well, we'll see if she can add on here. Bulldogs are up 7 nothing, and it is, could blow this I'm open. I'm sorry. I, missed, I thought that was Jefferson at the plate. It was Gendry Maria, and now Jefferson's on deck. Strike one by Gazzardi. Bases loaded. One out. Frank on third. Rodriguez on second. Maria on first at the plate. Gazzardi. Outside. One and one. Sun's still up behind us. Still giving up some heat, but the wind has picked up a little bit. Here's the pitch. High ball, two. Good eye by the pitcher, Gazzardi. Two so it's a pitcher one pitcher battle here. Yeah, you got to like it. So far, Gazzardi's been pretty solid with it. Come on the plate. Popped up and behind us and, and out of play. Oh, man, that just missed hitting that car behind us. <laughs> so two balls, two strikes, one out, bases loaded. Dogs trying to get home to get some kibble. That Swing and a miss. It's a strike out to Gazzardi. Two outs, bases loaded for Amelia Jefferson. Don't worry, nobody got hurt. The ball rolled into the street behind us. Yep. And, and here's the pitch. There's a strike call. Strike one. Mm. 
And fouled off down the third base line. Got the ball back there. Just give it right there. Two strikes on Miss Jefferson. Bases loaded. Here's the pitch. Fouled on the third base line again. Good swing by Jefferson, but just out in front a little bit. Chris Marley, Brahita Mahia. Brito Mahia is on deck in the second. Lined out to the shortstop, her first at bat. And here is uh, Miss Jefferson coming back to the plate. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and Rebowitz is out of the inning. But Brooklyn College scores two runs on two hits. Three runners left. At the end of two, it's 7 nothing Brooklyn. You're listening to 2024 Brooklyn College Bulldog Softball live on YouTube.com. I am Pat Brown along with my partner, Jonathan Pariente. All right. So you had asked me, Pat, and I'm going to answer you about how to get into broadcasting. Well, you know, I, I guess you could say it was around like my final year of high school. I kind of really got fully into it. I, I did a little... Bit. I mean, way back I was in third grade. I did a little anchoring, like for okay. once. Way back in like the in like Manhattan, I did something for that one. Museum of TV and ra uh, television and, uh, and radio, I believe it was way okay. back before they changed it. But yeah, really, it was around high school that I really got into broadcasting. I would listen to I would listen to the Yankees games on the radio because I didn't have cable at the time. Oh, so, so see, we we're kind of similar. Listen to Bill White and Phil Rizzuto. Well, for me, it was listening to John Sterling and Susan Waldman. Oh, okay. Know? Um, I, you know what? I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> what? What's up? I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to date myself. So <laughs> I think I already did. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what you mean by that? Because Phil Rizzuto was back in the '70s. Oh yeah, listen, the scooter yeah. was was great. He, you know, yes. Holy cow, right? That was yep. what he was so good at doing. He, he he played his position well, and he was a great broadcaster. He just knew the game better than absolutely anybody. And um, he had the uncanny and unbelievable stories. Yeah. And that's really what the great ones have. Vince mm -hmm. Scully did Number that. Three. Vince Rachel Scully could tell you stories Rachel. you would never have imagined in the game. Ralph Kiner could tell you stories back when he was oh, doing yes. Kiner's Corner. So as Rachel Linser, 8-9-1, and takes a strike from Gazzardi. We're in the top of the third. It's 7-0. Brooklyn is up. As Gazzardi pitches and oh, strike two on the swing and miss. Bulldogs have been in firm control since the beginning. Foul the way, still screen. strike two. So when when did you actually like start doing broadcasting on a regular, regular basis? basis? Really, when I got into Kingsborough College, I did uh, I did some. Uh, I worked in their radio station uh, as a DJ in a ninety point three FM. Back then, it was a uh, classic rock station. Over the years, it changed over to electronic dance. Okay. So it became One ball, two strikes. Which is low. So, yeah, I did. that was kind of how I first began. And then I did a little interning uh, down the road. When I came over to Brooklyn, I was working, you know, did work in the station. I did my own pot show here. I interned at Westwood One for about a half a year uh, around late spring of 2012. So this is right around the time I became sports director. This is right around the time the broadcast for Brooklyn College started. So I was doing interning while all that was going on. Okay. And, you know, then, look, I, and, you know, it, it further helped me develop editing and get me a little better with, uh, you know, getting some getting some pointers from professionals, you know, how to better broadcast and how to Count is now better. full to Miss Linser. So I'm very grateful for that. I can tell you another story in a minute, but uh, there's a strike three. Caught her away. looking. Linser, unbelievable, but it's a K. Four, Gazzardi, hold up, we're making a change. Substitution coming. So we'll wait to get the change right by the official. coming up. It, wind is really now yes. picking up. You can really feel yeah, the Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go get my jacket soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably have to wear mine also now at this yeah. point. I, I can't disagree with you, Pat. But. So. so there we go. Yes. Number? Uh, number two, number two so going in for number one. Number two going in for number one. Okay. So now Zoe Bodnick the, will come Zoe in now. Zoe Bodnick, okay, for number one. Yep. Gotcha. All right. 
So Zoe Bodnick will enter the game now for... The wind is causing havoc with my papers. It's <laughs> blowing all over the place. Yeah. Number one, so it's number two. Botnick. And it is... Uh, sister of Ashley Botnick. Yeah. So the, Bo the Botnick sisters will be playing now yes. on the game. Blitney, Blit. Blitman's up. Men takes a strike and swinging strike. That's two strikes with one out. So, so during the time when I was also at Westwood One, I did quietly behind my deed, but by my producer's back. He doesn't even know that I did this, but you know, one thing you never want to leave the interns alone in the room for too long because you strike three. Three. I uh, took down the numbers of some of the contacts of broadcasters that were in that were on his computer. I just wrote it down while he was out. And crazy thing, I would e I went on to email one of them. It was Ian Eagle. Ah. I emailed him back in 2013 about sending a few broadcasts to him. Blotnick fouls off the first fix, 0-1. Oh, and, and it wasn't until 2020, the COVID pandemic hit. Suddenly I'm walking in the park and he emails me back. <laughs> he wanted me to send him the broadcast and I sent him again. Strike two. And sure enough, I did. And just later on in the day, he would call, my he would call me on the phone and I'd be talking to him. And that began my podcast, getting him on as a guest. The same thing with Kenny Albert. I didn't hear back from him for eight years. So things come really full circle when you really think about it. And I'm very grateful for that opportunity because everybody kind of has their own story of how, yep. how they make it in this business. Two balls, two to strikes to Ashley Botnick with two outs in the top of the third, trailing 7 nothing on the Maccabees Bizarre to the Bulldogs. Bizarre just continues this dominant stretch. Full count now. She already has one base on balls in this but contest. No hits allowed. So the key rule, no hits have been allowed yet by Gazzardi. Yep. And, and cut swing on it. and a miss strike three. That's the sixth strikeout for Gazzardi. And it's three up, three down. We're going to the bottom of the third. It is Brooklyn seven, Yeshiva nothing. It's going to be four, five, and six for Brooklyn. Hold on, check that. I'm 9-1-2 and two for Brooklyn yep. in the third. <laughs> yeah, I see Jonathan has put the jacket on. Yeah, Pat, it's finally uh, getting to that point. Yeah, of, uh, yeah. Getting a little too nippy. Well, listen, the, the listeners that have been listening all season, they know I've been complaining about the weather for most of the season. <laughs> and right now, listen, for a game and a half to be not wearing a jacket and a hat <laughs> and, having, good. <laughs> and having hand warmers and three pairs of pants and two jackets and a sweater. And <laughs> you layered up that much? Oh, it, it was freezing. My goodness. Oh, yes. <laughs> Only imagine. Matthew could tell you it was cold. And there is no shelter. You see, there is nothing to block the wind at all. I would have brought maybe some heat, so maybe some heating lamps or something. Maybe bring uh, a kerosene I wish we could have. To keep yourself warm. Yep, oh always God. rain. Well, they say April showers bring May flowers, right? I, I, I joked before the, the the first game that hey, I won't have to go into the dugout and get some hot chocolate. I may have to change my mind on that. <laughs> So now Brito Mejia comes up for Brooklyn, the number nine hitter. Chris Marley, Brito Mejia at the plate. Leibowitz deals. And That's pop a fly in ball center, to field. center field. They're chasing. That's and it drops drop in for, for a single. So Brito Mejia gets a single. Remember, Brito Mejia had that line out last inning, uh, last time up. Yeah, she put a good wood on that first one. Well, And she got a break there at Jump in between the second baseman and the center fielder for a single as Palacio steps to the plate and takes high ball. One with Palenque on deck. Oh. Yep. Palacios had a single. She's one for two today. And the pitch. And That's popped up, up and caught, by, caught the by the catcher. Going to second first and uh, almost doubled up was Mejia. But it's an out well, as... Uh, Palacios popped out to the catcher. So one away now for Yashi for Brooklyn. 
Lazissa Palenque at the plate. And Rahita Mejia takes second base on the steal. Bulldogs looking for that eighth run. On the strike call to Palenque. I've had the pleasure of talking with Miss Palenque's father after most of the games. And, and it's a line drive and over, over the head. head. So Brahita Mejita is going to round third. She's going to come home. Palenque digging for third. And she's going to come home. Is it going to be an inside the park home run? Yes, it is. It's a two-run inside the park home run from Jalissa Palenque. And Brooklyn's up 9 nothing. Well, we were waiting for that first home run in this doubleheader. Now we got it. Oh, yes. And now the Bulldogs up nine runs and closing in on that mercy rule once again. Yes, indeed. As Zoe Van Vliet on deck and swings and line and dunks in front of the left fielder for a single. Van Vliet rounds first and stops right there. And now she's on first base, and there's still only one out in the inning. Isabel Frank at the plate. Bulldogs just continuing to jump on these first pitches from Leibowitz, and they have taken advantage here. You I don't know, maybe it. Leibowitz is running out of gas in this second game? Well, I, don't know. I mean, this is the second game now she's pitched, and eventually at some point, no matter you throw over underhand, that arm is going to eventually... Run out of gas. It just uh, had just so how it goes. Four one outside, and popped up, and coming in, and dropped. As going to second base, and not going to get the force as they tried to get her, but it's going to be a single. And Frank is on first, Van Vliet on second. Coming to the plate, Vida Rodriguez. Rodriguez is uh, 0 for 1, uh, 0 for 2, fielder's choice, and reached on the error but got an RBI. As you can hear, the wind has definitely picked up. And strike. Ball strike, whoa. One ball, one strike. One out, one on. Sorry, two on. Van Vliet on second. Frank on first pitch. There's a strike. Strike. One ball, two strikes. I hear the, hear the wind picking dug up. out for Brooklyn's head. You got this, you got this, you got this. Here we go on the pitch. Outside. Two. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. On deck, Gentry Maria. Hi, we got a full count. Two. There is a base open. Will she get her to put away, or will she put her on base? Well, Bulldogs, Bulldogs could load up the bases here. And fouled, and Ground picks ball. it up, and goes to third, and He'll steps on it. Third, so she down. gets the force. So the second fielder's choice bounced into by Rodriguez, but... Everybody's going to stay right there. It's going to be two runners still on, but it'll be Frank was forced out at third. So that's going to go five on so assisted. It's first and second with two outs. And bounce to shortstop. Picked it up. Throws it to third, and that's the end of the inning. But two runs on the two out. Inside the park home run by Jalissa Palenque. And we're up nine, nothing. Coming to the plate, it'll be two, three, and four for the Maccabees. Fans, you are watching Brooklyn College Bulldogs softball on YouTube.com, your home for everything, Brooklyn. We thank you so much for taking some of your time here with us to join us. And we're going to continue to update you guys on Brooklyn College men's volleyball. We will give you an update as we go into the first round of that. Let's take a look at that as we go. But right now, Pat, you just love how the Bulldogs have come out. They, 
they had to really bounce back after a, after that six game on a six game losing streak. They did that. They and here they are now playing, continuing to throw shutout ball here against Yeshiva. We're in the top of the fourth. Mercy rule we are closing in on as well, so we will keep things up to speed. Okay, the men's game will start at 6.30, not 6 o'clock. 6.30, not 6 o'clock. Oh, thought we'd have an so, uh, yeah, update Yeah, we thought it was 6 o'clock. So only it, six it, minutes away from the start. So we hope to have a little update with you on men's volleyball as we go. And so now it is Shamil will come up. at the plate for the Maccabees. And Guzzardi is 3, 4, 2, 3, and 4. Sets and delivers. And All foul away, it's a strike. Steve Reich, a one. <laughs> Gazzardi ready. And Pats right to the pitcher, picks it up, tosses the first. In time, it's one away. So it goes one, three on the put out. And now it is number 35. Kira Appel to the plate. Inside on the corner, strike one. Swing and a miss. Strike number dos. Very good fastball again. Gazzardi still coming out with throwing that heat. Even though the temperature has been dropping. Strike three the on the outside corner. Caught her looking for strikeout number eight. Nope, strikeout seven. number seven. seven. Sorry. Yeah, that's seven. But that's Getting the ahead of myself. One. That's the second one caught looking, though, of the night for Gazzardi. And so Gazzardi with 17 Ks Miss in these two Dillon games. On the plate. Ball one. Check swing. Check swing. And nope. She went up. She went past the plate. Strike two. It's one and one. One and one. All oh, right. Right. One the first one. one was a ball. Yes. Now one and two. So they sweeps off the plate so we can see it. Dylan steps back in and one ball, two strike count with two outs. Gazzardi's ready. Here's the pitch. Three. Got a miss. She strikes out the side. That is eight Ks now for Gazzardi. So 18, 18. Ks in two games so yes, far. Yes, indeed. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, it is nine nothing Bulldogs. So again, we might be going for the mercy roll. The Yeshiva will be down to their final three outs in the top of the fifth. They'll have to score right now. Two runs to continue the game. So now we're going to see some slight substitutions here. We'll Jonathan, it's funny. You used to listen to the Yankee games on the radio. That's exactly how I got into it. Well, wow. I started listening to the Yankee games on WOR. Wow, back in the old days. Yes. Then I was listening to uh, hockey. The Islanders back in the 80s when they won the four Stanley Cup championships. And yep. it was just the excitement of listening to it on radio but not being able to see it. And then when I actually saw a hockey game that used to come on late on Channel 9, oh, man, I fell in love. And, and it just – I used to turn off the TV and <laughs> – Practice you know, calling it on your own. Yep. Yep. And that's what you have to do. That's that's really how, the, how you really can get better at it is by – Taking some time to call a game on your own, you know, record it on your phone or whatever, however you you make it work. Who who are some of your idols in broadcasting? Well, no doubt Kenny Albert and Nine Eagle. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the two of them really just bring a different element to how they call a game. And you know, I had a chance to read Kenny Albert's book this past year. You know, over the course of the year when I uh, met him the other earlier late late Christmas. And one of the things he mentioned is preparation. That's going to be the biggest key. If you, you know what you're going to talk about, you're prepared, then it's going to be like another day in the office. It's not like, you know, it. for him, broadcasting is not work for him. No, it's, it's not work for us. 
If it's something you love to do, it's not work. Exactly. So we're here to the bottom of the fourth. It's Gazzardi at the plate. Leibowitz to deliver. First pitch. Bounces in front of the plate. It's ball number one. Here's Gazzardi now. Let's see if she can maybe add on a little bit more to the Bulldogs' 9 nothing lead. On deck is Amelia Jefferson. Ball bounces before the plate again. It's no balls and two strike. And Leibowitz is definitely in the last two innings. Definitely the pitches have been slower and not yeah. as strong. High ball three. three. Umpire Steimer's not giving those high calls. He, if you're all over the place, he will not call that a strike. There's a strike That's a there. strike. On the corner, it's three balls, one strike. And i got to believe that Coach Marinello is going to tell her to take another strike. And, and that's exactly what happened. So now the count is full. And now Gazzardi is going to have to protect the plate and look for her pitch. Three and two on Gazzardi. Payoff. Inside ball, four. And Gazzardi's on with a walk. Good bad for Gazzardi. That's the second base on balls for Leibowitz. Hard to believe only the second walk in this game. So Amelia, oh, hold on. Runners out at first. What happened? I know what happened here. Oh, stepped off. Oh, she stepped off. So that's a rule. If you step yeah, off you the step bag, off, that's, that's an automatic out. So out. Ooh, that's stepping off, and now she's out. So it's one out. Jefferson takes inside ball one. So Pat, when they say you really have to stay on the base, they you really, really have to they stay really on the mean base. it. They don't. They are not even kidding if you take your foot off the bag. Hey, hi, Dasha. Up. Oh. All right, we're gonna have Dasha joining us on the microphone here. Inside so ball dirt. two. All right, Dasha. Let's make sure you can hear us there. Oh, other way. Other way there. There you go. Here, Dasha, can pull up a seat. Don't get comfortable. Enjoy. Hello. All right. Here's this pitch. Pitch is outside in the count. Nope, they call oh, a strike. Call that a strike. Ball, wow. two strikes. So, Dasha, you've gotten to really see uh, throughout the season uh, Danielle Gozardi. And what is, uh, what's so unique about it? There's a fly Popped ball, up. by the way. And it's going to be caught. Nice play by, First baseman, by Kira Appel. That's going to be out number two. Uh, what has just impressed you so much about Danielle Gozardi? We have really seen her attack the plate, uh, has really good life on her fastball. And uh, what, what impresses you so much about her? Yeah, I mean, Danielle's just always been a beast. I've been playing with her for a few years. Um, we have only had one pitcher the past few years, and just the fact that she can come out every Crap. single game we have, play two doubleheaders in a row. Ball's she bobbled. She can throw 300 pitches, and she's still throwing the same speed. She just wow. doesn't get tired. It's pretty insane. Um, I'm sure, like, as the weather warms up, you see she has a little more speed on her pitches today. So, Well, we've Smiley definitely seen that today. Mejia just single. Single for Mejia. All righty. And now at the plate is Palacio. Woo, high. Ball one. That was up around the eyeballs. <laughs> Paige is short, so. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Sorry, Paige. <laughs> I mean. Are there any like challenges, pitches outside, to playing double headers each and every you know, with each game that you play? Because I mean, it does for any pitcher, it does take a toll on your arm, and you know, it is a little extra miles on you know fielding the ball, etc. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, I feel like for all of us, it's really a matter of focus. Like by the end of the second game, three balls, you know, no we strikes. have to find the ability to remain as focused as we can. Um, we. Need to just work on not letting up. Start strong, end strong. Um, yeah, we definitely, it's been cold too. It's been <laughs> really cold, which has been, you know, everyone stiffens up, everyone gets a little tired. Mm -hmm. yep. but hey, major leaguers have to deal with the cold often. Yeah. You know, even, especially when you get into October and September, October, and even into November at times. Yeah. Uh, it definitely does yeah, happen definitely. there. Now, if All they're, um, as the season's winding, is halfway winding down and uh, you're in your final season, Dasha. Oh, yeah. What are some things you will? Uh, what are some things you'll take from your time playing here with Brooklyn College, uh, with, with both the basketball team and here with the softball team? 
Yeah, I mean, it just sounds corny, but I'm never going to get the opportunity to do this again in my life, you know, play two college sports. So I've just tried to enjoy my time as much as I can. This softball season, I mean, my batting average is higher than it's ever been. So I feel like I'm just going to keep working hard. Line Let's go, into so. left center, and it's going to go through the center fielders. One run is going to score. That's Mahita Mahia. And Rogers. coming in to score will be Palacios, and she scores. It's a two Run double for Palenque, and it's 11 nothing Brooklyn. Palanque's had a really impressive game. Had the inside of the park home run, now a two-run double. She just has a very good approach at the plate. She's not afraid to spray the ball all over, left, right. Yeah, she's a great new addition to our team. She's been doing really well. Zoe Van Vliet and now you guys on the really plate. able to come out swinging here. You know, it was a rough couple of games. And are they just going to end nope, the inning right there? And that is it. Yeah, she left the base early. Uh, left Marinello the said, nope, that's it. We're going to bring so gonna up. going to go to the fifth inning. All right. Going yep. to the top of the fifth, and right. there'll be three the outs mercy away. Rule. So the mercy rule comes into play after this inning. So if you Talk hold. Talk to me a little bit, Dasha, about how Coach Marinello coaching style differs from last year's team. I mean, Coach and his whole coaching staff, they're, it's just a lot more serious. Um, Coach Moore last year, you know, it. It was tough. It was just him. I mean, we had McNiff, but it was just really Glenn. Um, but they've come in and just really taken charge of the program. It's been a little tough because our team is so small, but, um, you know, they are very, I would say, very solid. They're probably the best softball coaches I've ever had in my life. So, you Do you know. feel like the team is starting to maybe turn that corner? You know, maybe. Now, I know it's only been, I know we're only basing this off of just, again, it's two games here today, but. But games like this could get could get this team back and back in the right direction again, and yeah, go definitely. five and nine with your next few games coming up. Yeah, I think this is going to be a good confidence booster. We just need to go into our next games because we're playing. I mean, we have John Jay on Saturday, you know, and that's, that's uh, probably our toughest game of the season, our toughest conference game. So we need to go in there. I think the confidence from these wins will help us. <laughs> but um, I think that we need to eliminate errors for sure. I think that's the main thing we need to focus on because we come out if, if we get our bats going and we. <laughs> keep our errors to a minimum. I mean, we're a solid team. We're yeah. a very solid team, so. Do you yeah. feel like now the bats are starting to come around? Maybe, uh, you know, some of the plays in the field are starting to get a little better as the season moves on? Yeah, it, uh, yeah. we just need to be consistent with it. Consistent. Yeah. Do you think that you can utilize your speed on the base pass a little more? Uh, challenge hitters, I mean, challenge catchers to try and throw you guys out. You got speed, you got Palacios, got Palanque, you got Jefferson who can steal some bases. Yeah, we definitely can. Um, we do have a lot of speed. I think Paige is going to be a – Paige is a very good base runner, so I think the more bases she can steal, you know, that will definitely help us. All right. And so now we begin at the, the night. is Leibowitz. He throws it. Throws it across the diamond and in time. It's five to three and one out. Well, give you Shiva credit. They tried to break the no-hitter up by doing a little drag bunt. Almost worked. Yeah, so that now girl's it's Leibowitz at the plate. Two outs away from a no hitter. Is already closing in on hmm. that, but let's see if she can get there. Ground Bounce. ball. Taken by Not Black Eye. Picks it up. Throws across. And she got it's him anyway. Time. Oh, what a play by Palacios and the first baseman Rodriguez to pull it out. And now there are two outs. Definitely almost sweated a few times there. But, I mean, that probably would have been an error if it, that a runner didn't reach, but it was it was a close play. But now it's left to Kahani. Foul the way. One almost went into the dugout. Heck, we actually went through under the gate and into the street. Wow. <laughs> Down to their last two strikes. Well, we were nice to have a good Samaritan Pitch. get us a previous Fouled ball back. Fouled off strike two. We out of one the strike room. away. <laughs> oh, and two the count. Kahani, glad to see she's back in the game after that early uh, scare she had. Josh, if in the you first can, base. after the game, can you ask Coach Frank Marinello to come on over yes, for us? Yes, of course. Thank the you. 0-2 pitch coming to Kahani. Comes. That, that is it. Strike three. Strike three. It's Cole, a perfect it. game and a no, no hitter. hitter. All right, well, it's been no nice, hitter. guys. Perfect. Here you yep. go. I'll give you your. Dasha, thank, thank you, you Dasha so much. Ford. Thank you for the comments. Doing this. Us. All right, let's get Coach Marinello here. The Bulldogs with a dominant. 11 nothing win. They took game one, 12 nothing. So the Bulldogs come in for 23 total runs yes. and hold Yeshiva to no hits as the Bulldogs now will get set 
to continue on to their next game coming up in a matter of days from now. It's, they are now five, five and, and nine. nine. That's important. Look, this was a big bounce back win. The Bulldogs needed to snap the skid. They did that, and now can the Bulldogs keep it going? This is this is exactly what they needed. They needed a team that they could get their cells routed, righted again, get the ship going, and listen, they put up 23 runs, and uh, Gazzardi just dominated. Didn't give them any chance at all. Well, that's so. what you have to be able to do. You got to hold the opposition down, and the Bulldogs did that. So now yes. we hope to get Coach Marinello here momentarily. You see, uh, he's going to talk to players. Hopefully, maybe we can get Polonk if we could. If not, not going to complain. He's going to just have a little talk for a moment. But the Bulldogs, a dominant 11 0 win. You got to love the effort that the Bulldogs came out with. You got to love the job done by Daniel Gazzardi. Kuz it's. I think the Bulldogs really have a very special player there. I mean, someone that can really, well, I know college doesn't have a Cy Young award, but her stuff is better than any pitcher I've seen so far. Well, before the season, she was uh, the conference player to watch out for in the preseason, and she's been living up to the bill. No doubt about it. She's got impressive stuff. I mean, it, it, you don't find many pitchers with, with, that type of, with that type of ability to throw a ball like that. It, it's, no. it's hard to find talent like that. And she's been doing it for two years. Last year, she really came on to herself. And now she's just continuing that trend. So now as we await, the Bulldogs with 11 runs, scored 12 runs in the first game. Men's volleyball about now to get yeah, underway. They should, be, they should be starting right yep, now. The right? game has begun. It's, and we're going to see if we can fill you in. And right now it's 11-8 Lehman in the first set. Okay, 11-8. So, so the Bulldogs, uh, so the Bulldog, it was back and forth for a good, for a first chunklet. It was 4-3 and then Lehman pulled ahead. Oladosu with a couple of kills, three consecutive kills. And you know, the Bulldogs are still in, it's still in, in this, now it's 12-8 Lehman as we go in the first set. So the Bulldogs are going to have to be very wary. We have seen Lehman, Pat. We know what the Lehman Lightning are capable of doing. A very scrappy, scrappy team. It took <laughs> the Bulldogs five sets to beat them here at home. Yep. Was, that was not. That was one of the best games we called all year. I think no doubt in my mind. And I think it's going to go back and forth again because both teams played the same style. They're scrappy. They're going to go after every ball. They're going to try and put teams away. And hopefully we're going to get Mr. Marinello over here. And Marinello is going to make his way down. One moment. And it looks like he is going to make get his him way. Get quick. Coach Marinello coming. is coming. He's All right, he's going to be right over there. All right. Yay, team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And as the Bulldogs now will continue this next stretch of the season and, and how important it was to get a victory like this. Uh, Sorry. We hope to see the women continue this run. And I think the women are just are only just getting started with what they're truly capable of doing. Yes. I think this club can go a lot deeper than people think, but again, you know, you take away a few of those tough losses, this would be a whole different season right now. You take away that Rutgers loss, you take away the, the Hunter loss, this team could easily be 9-5 and five right now. You are, you are so right. And here is Coach Marinello. He joins us on the headphones here and other way around coach Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem uh, coach very impressive dominant victory here against uh, Yeshiva 11 nothing and 12 nothing shutout uh, a double no hitter for Danielle Gazzardi how important was it to snap that six game losing streak and come in here with oh, two big 100%. wins here today I mean uh, the effort's been there you know the ball didn't obviously it hasn't gone our way in a few, uh, few a lot of those losses where we didn't complete games but today seemed that we, you know, we had the ability to complete the game. Playing in the field was was really crisp today. Some great plays by Palacios. Some very solid plays at third. When you're able to get that playing consistently, I mean, how how much can it change the direction of where this team could head going down the rest of the season? Yeah, my expectations are high, right? Like I've I've won my whole life, and I expect to win. Absolutely. And uh, coach, what is it about Miss Gazzardi? that gives you the confidence to keep putting her out there game after game after game. I call her rubber arm. Doesn't seem to get tired. You know, I've been, I've been doing this a long time, and there's just a handful of kids that I could compare her to. Uh, and, you know, some of those kids are just special. 
you know, we're just blessed to have her. We're blessed. I mean, she's a special young woman. She's a special player, a special pitcher. Yeah, nothing, you know, you couldn't tell if she was losing 10 nothing or winning 10 nothing. Do you feel the uh, direction now of this team is starting to turn? Do you feel like now with these two wins, as you go into your next game, you know, this team can build a little momentum here. I mean, could this team go on a very deep run? Uh, we're going to break some hearts. I mean, uh, they're very competitive. Their practices are very competitive. Uh, you know, every every day they're getting they're understanding better and better who they are. So I wouldn't be surprised, you know, we, we, we get into the playoffs and we win a few games. Okay. So you're, you're building your identity. So this is your first year. You know, you got a young, a relatively young team, a couple of veterans. So what do you think, what is the identity that you want them to have going into that playoff? So, uh, I just want to say, I know everybody wants to say, hey, you're here the first year. I've been doing this a very long time, you know. It, so maybe right here I've been doing it for my first year at Brooklyn College. But, uh, you know, I've been doing this well over 20 years. I've coached teams that, you know, uh, you know, it's not where you start, it's where you finished, where the level of competition and, and the camaraderie really grows within. And uh, I expect nothing else but that to happen here. You know, I expect to get better and better every game. Well, listen, we can't, we can't see any better than a perfect game and a no-hitter. <laughs> uh, you know, she's a kid that could spin. You know, once she fills up the zone, I mean, and if we have the ability to play behind her, she's going to be very tough. This was basically the first game you played under good weather conditions. So <laughs> if, if that's the case we're going to get with good weather, I'd say oh it goodness. bodes very well. Well, uh, we're blessed that we have a field on campus. We're blessed that we have an indoor facility. We have the support of, you know, of a lot of people within within this this school, and uh, you know, I'm not saying we have a, an open book, but uh, you know, we've on six days on, one day off, right? So if you can't get better six days on, one day off, then you know, I would better take up a different career. Coach right. <laughs> Marinello, thank you so much. I for appreciate your time. Your time. You, Great Coach. job, right. gentlemen. Uh, you no, know, unfortunately, this will be myself and John.